What is up internet? Welcome back to Mile High K, America's best K car channel. In today's video, we're gonna be changing out the battery on the Honda Beat as well as doing a little bit of a tune-up. So let's get into it. So in preparing for this, I did a little bit of research on the Honda Feet Forum, and I had a couple of different options. So first, people said that a 1991 Mazda Miata battery was a little bit shorter than the original battery that came in the, the Beat, which is right here. And then the other option is for a 2007 Honda Fit. And as you can see, they're the exact same size. The only difference is that these are JIS posts, so they're a little bit skinnier than the American posts. The reason why I went with the Fit battery is, first off, for a Honda part, so I thought that was pretty cool, but second is that at the auto parts store, when they brought out the 91 Miata battery, it was just way too big. I could tell it wasn't gonna fit. This was my best option. They were the exact same price, um, so it was $200, um, and then you get a $20 core charge as well. This is confirmed a direct replacement, and there is still plenty of room up top to have the adapters for these posts, which I'll go grab right now. So these are the adapter posts for the B battery. Like I said, these are JIS, which stands for Japanese Industrial Standard. A lot of their Phillips screws, like on old motorcycles and stuff, are JIS. They look like they're Phillips, but they're just slightly off. So if you try to use a Phillips screwdriver and not a JIS screwdriver, you're gonna strip them out every time. Ask me how I know. But these will adapt the American size posts to JIS, which is really awesome. I got these off of Amazon for like 15 bucks or something like that. Um, so they just go on like so, and then the connectors attach to right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. there you have it. It's a pretty quick install. It took me about five minutes. The only inconvenient thing now is since these adapters are for US spec terminals, these two are half inch nuts. So these are the only two non-metric bolts on the car, which is kind of weird. I do have these like two fat wires right here, which I'm assuming were for the stereo. The owner that I bought this from removed a amplifier and an aftermarket stereo that was in the car. I'm assuming that's what it's for. Not quite sure, but just gonna leave those there. It tucks in really nice. Um, it doesn't touch anywhere near where the trunk will come down. So that little project is all done. Another option that I saw on the Beat forums for the battery is to go and get a lawn and garden battery. So something for like a riding lawnmower or something. I guess they're like $30 and they do fit, allegedly. You heard it here first, or maybe second, I don't know. 2007 Honda Fit battery confirmed fit with the JIS terminal adapters. All right, I'm gonna take the battery that I took out of the car to AutoZone so I can get the core charge back. And then while I'm there, I'm gonna get a couple things to do a little bit of a tune-up to make sure that this thing can pass emissions. I'm just gonna get a new air filter, new spark plugs, and then I might as well do an oil change and send some fuel injector cleaner through the system and let it run a little bit. So I'll meet back up with you as soon as I'm done with that. All right, I'm back from AutoZone. I got all of my stuff right here. It was about 50 bucks. 
Uh, I wasn't able to get a air filter, but the previous owner did tell me that that air filter is pretty new and it's a K and N. So I should be able to just blow it out and it should be fine. Uh, first step is to jack up your car. So conveniently right here on the rear subframe, there's a jack point. So just gonna put my jack there, get my jack stands on the side, and then I'll be able to crawl underneath there and drain the oil. Uh, this is from the axle leak, which I mentioned last time. I don't know if you can see, but it is pretty gross up there. It definitely is that axle seal. I got that on order. Uh, it should be coming in the next couple days, but we won't worry about that right now. It's fine. I'll just keep refilling it. So let's get to it. There we go. Nice. So this is kind of cool. It's a little throwback to one of my very first videos doing an oil change on the Acti. So with the Beat, the engine platform is very similar. It's just fuel injected rather than carbureted. So it takes the same amount of oil, same kind of oil, and the process is pretty much the same with a couple changes. Here's the drain plug. This is a 17 millimeter bolt. As soon as you drain it, you can undo, well, you can probably do this first, but this is the oil fill. So as you may know, the oil fill on the Acti is near the back wheel. So this one goes straight down and there's a tube right here and it kind of goes into like the little, there's like a little crankcase breather right there. So that's where all the oil goes in. So three quarts of oil. It's actually 2.7, but can't hurt with a little bit of extra oil. So drain the oil and then we'll be able to change out the oil filter. The oil filter is the same as on the Acti uh, and pretty much every other Honda for that matter. So here's the oil filter. It's this part number and we'll be good to go. So let's get to it. <laughs> There's the oil change done on the Honda Beat. Super straightforward, same as on the Acti, same as on like any car really. And then just one more thing I wanted to point out about the Beat in case people are curious, this is the dipstick location. So the dipstick is right here. It just goes straight into the crankcase uh, on the Acti. Again, it's in the passenger side wheel well, but this is, it's all, focused back here. Now the next things that I want to do are to inspect the air filter and while I have like the air box off I really want to put on the gold one with the heat reflective tape on it. Air box is right there. Uh, in order to access it it appears like it's really tight right here. There's a little access panel. So these are 10 millimeter bolts or a Phillips or JIS screwdriver. So you take this off and you're able to access the air box a lot easier. So that's pretty sweet. Um, after that, I will want to change the spark plugs. And in order to do that, you have to undo part of the soft top. So on the inside, there's a, a zipper that you unzip this the back window and it folds up. And this is actually an access panel underneath there. But 
We'll get to that after we take out the air box. Something I want to talk about real quick are air filters. So this is the OEM air filter for the Beat. Um, you can see mine is not brand new, but it's a little dirty. It's been used. Uh, the back looks really nice, um, but this is not what was in the car. So this K&N filter is what was in the car, and it does technically fit inside of the air box, but when you set it in, you can see it doesn't quite fit correctly. And this is actually backwards, but it does plop in there, but it bulges up. And then you kind of have to like push it down for it to seat correctly. So this seal isn't the best. Um, and you can kind of compare them like side by side. This one's just like a quarter of an inch longer. So what I'm gonna do is I sprayed this one out with uh, compressed air, get as much um, dirt and grime out of it as I can, and I'm gonna use this filter and hopefully the better seal uh, helps me out. I'm gonna hang on to this one just in case, but I do have another one of the OEM ones on order. So we'll slap this in there with the uh, gold air box and we'll be good to go. All right, the new air box is on with the new old filter and that just looks freaking incredible. So now I'm going to put the access panel back on, uh, seal everything up in the trunk area because we're not gonna need it to access the spark plugs, and then I'll lower the car down, make it a little bit easier to uh, kind of crawl on top and change out the spark plugs. Um, but yeah, that is how you change the oil and the air filter on a Honda Beat, the more you know. We're gonna do the spark plugs now. And in order to get to the engine access panel, which is underneath the back here, you can kind of see the top has this Velcro at the bottom. This Velcro reveals a zipper. See, you can see the zipper right there. So we're gonna undo the zipper. And this drops the window down so that now we can access that panel. Uh, this is kind of hard to do one-handed, so I'll see you in a sec. All right, now that we got the zipper undone, there are three bolts that hold the soft top on. They're just Phillips head, but Actually, they're JIS, so you can kind of see how they're a little stripped out from people using normal Phillips. This is a JIS screwdriver, so it got them out no problem. But now that this is able to come out, you can flop the soft top back, kind of like so. I guess it might help to pop the little button off, but now there's just a bit of carpet and some sound deadening that you fold back. And I'm gonna use this to kind of hold the flaps back. And now you have 
access to the rear engine hatch. So these are just 10 millimeter bolts and they should come off no problem. Now that the access panel is off, it is really easy to access all the important things that you'll need to change out on the engine. Spark plugs, uh, the fuel rail, the back of the intake, everything is all right there. Uh, there's also a oil cap right here that I guess in theory you could add oil there, but it isn't really necessary when the tube is in the trunk there. So these spark plug wires look pretty new. so. No need to change those out, but just going to pop the spark plugs out, swap them out. Uh, these are the spark plugs that are uh, specced out for the beat. Here's the number. And where you can find this information is actually in the trunk. Let me show you. So when you open up the trunk, right here, there's a little information panel with all the information about oil changes, um, the spark plugs, which are down at the bottom here. So this says spark plugs, and these are the specifications. So there's NGK and then ND. I'm not quite sure which one's that, but anyways, uh, this is the spark plug gap. So the gap is between one millimeter and 1.1 millimeters. So that's a really handy uh, little info card. I already looked at that before. So that is how I have the right spec. So this jet tag's pretty cool. That is it for this video. It was a pretty easy process. These old Hondas are just so fun to work on. They're so easy. Just a couple little quirks here and there with some basic tools, you can do it too. But again, we changed the oil, we changed the spark plugs, we swapped out the air filter, and I put in some fuel injector cleaner into there and hopefully this will tune it up and make it run real nice. But again, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. And don't forget, keep it small.